All right, yo, yo, everyone. Uh, here we are back again. I know it's been a while. It's been like, I don't know, a month since I've been doing basic videos, but uh, yeah, I've just been super busy, but now it's time to get back in the saddle. Um, and in this video, I'm going to talk about D-Menu, which is a program that probably a lot of you have heard about, but uh, the people never use it how it's really intended to. In fact, I didn't really use it how it's really intended to be using, intended to be used uh, until really a couple days ago, I started actually, actually experimenting with it. Uh, so I'm going to talk about how to use this thing. Um, actually, let me let me show you the basic usage that everyone knows about. So D-Menu, it's one of these suckless utilities, as you may know. And in its most basic form, a lot of people use it as an application launcher. So if you use the command D-Menu underscore run, which I have mapped to mod D, uh, you will get a nice little application launcher. And let's see, I want to open up Firefox, type that in, here it comes. Um, so that's usually how people know D-Menu. They just think of it as being an application launcher, but it's actually a more general and highly customizable uh, sort of menu selection. I I don't know. It's just I'll, we'll, we'll just get into it. We'll get into the kind of stuff you can do with it. Um, so just as an example, I have this little file here. Oh, and by the way, I'll I'll talk about this later. Notice that mine is a little different from the default. I just changed the colors. Uh, if you know how to change suckless utilities, uh, you do it in the configs, but I'll talk about that at the end of the video, just so you know. Uh, but if you install it, in, if you install the, the default binary, it's going to look a little different. Don't freak out about that. Um, anyway, so uh, I have this little file here. Uh, I've called it colors. Uh, it has a couple colors in it, red, blue, green, yellow, purple. Actually, let me pull up a, a window here. Uh, so we have the file colors. Um, now, how D-Menu works by default is you can pipe in uh, a bunch of different lines into D-Menu, and it's going to give you basically those options that you can choose from. So I can type in red. I can type in yellow. Um, you can type in uh, erp instead of purple. You don't have to start at the beginning. You can just... Uh, type some sub sub part of it, uh, or if you don't uh, start typing anything and just press enter, it'll just pick the first one. Or if you press escape, it's you know not going to choose anything. That's that's the basics of it. Now notice when you select successfully choose something, it's going to return that value. This is you know the power of D menu. It's really just you can write a script that decides what to send it and decides what to do with each of those options. So let me show you some of the ways that I've implemented this. Again, I've just really just been playing this with this for a day or so, uh, but these are the kind of things that I've been working on. Um, so first off, just a little script. Uh, this is just like one line, <laughs> um, but this is something pretty useful. Now, one problem that I often have is, or I used to have, was um, in my i3 config, I have a couple shortcuts here. Uh, let me maximize this. I have a couple shortcuts like mod shift X. I've always used to shut down my computer. Um, but that was a problem because originally I didn't have any way, like it just shut it down without asking what to do or anything. And mod shift X, it's not the kind of thing that you'll be pressing often. You're not, I think I accidentally pressed it once, but it's not a huge deal. But I wanted an extra layer of security regardless. So what I did here is I made this little script prompt, which you can see that it's now, uh, where is it? Yeah, so it's now running. So, and how the script prompt works is you give it one, its first argument is going to be the prompt that shows up in D menu, and the second option is going to be the command that it runs. And I defined this earlier in this document, but it's, you know, sudo shutdown, whatever, um, shutdown now, whatever it is. Um, so, anyway, how this little script prompt works is literally we just echo, um, so we'll do part of it manually. So we'll echo in no and yes uh, to D menu. And so now we're going to have the op options no and yes. We can select one of them or something. Um, the I is for case sensitivity. So that means I don't care if it's lowercase. It doesn't matter. Um, and the P here is for the prompt. So if I say something like, you know, are you sure? Uh, it'll say, are you sure here? Um, so again, all, all the script does is the first argument is just what prompt you want. And the second argument is if that prompt, if you select yes, that's the command you're going to run. So how this works is now if I press mod shift X, which is my shutdown command, um, it's going to ask me, are you sure you want to shut down? It's not going to automatically shut down. And if I press, if I type in no, or if I just type in nothing or anything that's not yes, um, it is going to, um, and it's not going to do anything. Same thing, I have a reboot. 
command, I have a shutdown i3 uh, shortcut, all of these, you know, now they don't do it automatically. They wait for confirmation in D menu, which is very, very nice. Um, so that's a little, little tiny optimization. So I have some other things as well. Um, another thing that I like being able to d select manually is um, what display I use. So I have another little script here. This is for if you connect your computer to a VGA, HDMI, or something like that. Now originally I did it in a sort of, I mean it worked, but it was sort of unencumbering because um, Basically, I had I had something like if I want to go to VGA, I mapped like F mod F10 to uh, use the VGA only, or mod F11 to use HDMI. Or I don't even remember what it is, but now I have those all in one D menu menu. So I have this whole script mo mapped to mod F3, um, and that gives me a couple options: laptop, dual display, laptop, VGA, HDMI. Uh, or manual select. I'm not going to select any. Actually, I can select manual selection. Manual selection just brings up a render. Any of the other ones are just going to automatically run a particular X render command that uses only that screen or whatever configuration um, I say. So I can pretty much add in different options here. And D menu allows me to you know choose you know if I want HDMI or whatever. Uh, oops, I press wrong one. Uh, HDMI or something like that. Um, I'm not going to actually select them because that'll mess up the recording. But uh, oh, and also if you're a Polybar user, um, I have uh, I have to get Polybar to restart, so I just have it restart after all these. Um, you know, just to, you don't have to do that if you don't have Polybar. It's just uh, if you change screens, Polybar needs to know where to respawn. So I have a, a launch script that launches it on every available display. Um, okay, so that that's that. So that's another thing, and the other. A uh, little script that I think is m might give you some ideas is um, let me open up my RSS reader here. So, oh, which I realize I haven't actually done a video on Newsboat, which I'm meaning to. Maybe I'll do that uh, today or tomorrow or something like that. But here's my RSS reader. Now I'm going to go to, let's go to Chris Acapinti's channel. Uh, he's got a bunch of shell script uh, tutorials right now. So I have a bunch of commands mapped. Well, okay. Usually in Newsboat, if you're a Newsboat reader, you know that you can select, you can, you know, add a bunch of uh, external commands to basically select whatever link is at stake in this RSS feed and open it in whatever program you want. Um, now I wanted, I, I do have that, but I want to be able to manually select which program I use to open this stuff up sometimes. So I have comma p uh, mapped to this uh, D menu command which says how should I open this link uh, and I'm gonna say I don't know MPV or something like that. Um, and I just have different choices for the kind of things I usually run on having, you know, on these different um, uh, RSS feed links or something like that. Now let me show you that script. That is uh, D menu handler. I'm just arbitrarily naming these things. Um, and again, it's the same idea. This is just for shortening the link if it's too long visually. Um, this just has different options. Run an MPV, run an MPV on loop. Sometimes I want to run GIFs in that. Um, have a floating MPV, uh, you know, open in FAR or your browser or something like that. Um, so anyway, that, that's pretty much it. Um, so hopefully these have given you ideas for the kind of stuff you can do with the menu. Now I will say, I think I've mentioned before, I have um, my own custom configuration of D-Menu. Now if you want to have I, I like having these colors because I think they go a little better with my configuration. Now, like most suckless utilities, dmenu does not have custom config files. Instead, you compile dmenu with whatever settings you want. Now, you're not going to be able to do that with the addition in your, you know, whatever your repos are, uh, your Arch repos or Ubuntu repos or something like that. Um, so, what you have to do is go to suckless.org. Uh, why is my computer lagging so bad? Um, it's probably because I'm using the new Firefox, but whatever. Um, so go to suckless.org, and I think it's tools. Yeah, and you just have to download the source code manually, dmenu. Um, and you can go into the con oops. You can go into the config file here, config dot config def or config h takes precedence. Um, and you can select what kind of colors you want. Um, I have my size a little bigger just because by default D menu is pretty small and it doesn't actually cover up all of my polybar, which I want. I don't originally like. You could see part of it, which was sort of annoying. Um, so I just make some little tiny tweaks there, uh, just to make it a little bit more usable. 
Um, but anyway, that's about it. So D menu, as I said, like I only just got into this stuff, but um, a couple days ago, actually configuring it deeply. Uh, but I definitely can consider. I definitely encourage you to try and configure it yourself. Get whatever you want out of it, just because there are uh, you know like most suckless utilities. You look at it at the beginning and you're like, oh, this is totally useless, and then you delve deeper into it and see that you can basically use it anywhere. So. Um, Anyway, that's about it, so I'll see you guys uh, next time.